So Google has been releasing some huge AI updates over the past week or so, and this includes updates for Notebook LM, Gemini 2.0, VO2, which is now their most advanced video model, and other updates coming out of Google Labs. So instead of me trying to make individual videos for Notebook LM update, VO update, Gemini 2.0 update, et cetera, et cetera, I wanted to compile all of this into one video to help you stay informed on everything Google is doing with AI behind the scenes. So be sure to stick around for the entire video. And if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. My name is Ryan, and my mission is to help you navigate the overwhelming world of artificial intelligence. And if you want to know my favorite AI tools and prompts that I use for marketing and content creation, be sure to get my free AI marketing essentials guide. You can find the link for this below this video. But now let's get back to all of these big updates coming out of Google. So the first major AI update I want to cover is Notebook LM, and this is still one of my favorite free AI tools offered by Google. Now they had a whole article here covering the big updates, and I'll leave a link to this and everything else that I mentioned in the video description below. And here they list in three bullets what the big updates are. And the very first update is a brand new user interface. Google claims it's optimized for managing and generating new content based on your sources. So if I go ahead and pull up this new interface, this is what it looks like if you haven't seen it already. And so here they've really divided this into three parts. You have your sources on the left. That hasn't changed. It's always been there. You have your chat, which is a lot more visible now than it was before. And now you have what's called their studio. So right on top, you have audio overview. We have the notes now below audio overview. So this is where you can add notes here. Uh, so this adds a new note. If I go back to studio, you can generate these, you know, FAQ study guides, briefing docs, timelines right here. I just think it's a lot easier to start chatting with Notebook LM in this new interface. So that is the first big update that they made. This is a really huge update that they came out with was the ability to engage directly with AI hosts during an audio overview. So if I hop back over to Notebook LM, I'm gonna show you what this new interactive mode looks like in real time. You'll see here I've uploaded a YouTube video as my source, this is a YouTube video I did. And then I asked Notebook LM to create an audio overview of the source that I uploaded. So typically what we would see before this new update is that man and woman speaking in realistic voices. So I'm gonna play it really quickly. Hey everyone and welcome back. We're diving deep into Notebook LM today. Oh yeah, Notebook LM. That free AI. Oh yeah, Notebook LM. Um, but here is the new uh, update called Interactive Mode. You'll see it's in beta, but if I click it, this is what will your screen will look like. And you'll notice there's a join button and there's also the play button. So what you can do now is you can actually join the conversation with these AI podcast hosts. I'm gonna show you what I mean here. I'm gonna do a real time example. Mm -hmm. We've got this awesome YouTube video uh, from Ryan Doser. Okay who seems to always, oh, hey there, how can we help? Yeah, that YouTube video from Ryan Dozer, it's pretty awesome, isn't it? He's got a good AI channel going on. Oh yeah, I'm glad you think so too. He really does break down complex AI topics well. And he's got a ton of great content. It's definitely. Oh yeah, uh-huh. Wow, thanks guys. I, I really appreciate the support and you know, keep plugging away. I love Notebook LM. Well, thank you so much for that. Yeah, that really means a lot. So as you can see, right, it's still a little delayed. There's like some hiccups there, but I mean, this is a really big update in my opinion. But unfortunately, if I download the audio file, my voice was not in it. Regardless if I used interactive mode or not, it only downloads the original audio overview of the AI man and AI woman having that podcast conversation. I would expect Notebook LM to probably come out with an update in the future where you can add your own voice into these conversations. So just something to look forward to there. Now, the other Notebook LM update was the introduction of Notebook LM Plus, which is a premium subscription model to the original Notebook LM. And they have a whole page dedicated comparing what you get in Plus to what you get just in the free version of Notebook LM. And really the big difference here is you get higher usage limits, right? We see a similar trend from ChatGPT Plus to Claude Pro. Usually it's like a 5X higher usage limit, and that's what we're getting here. Get 5X more audio overviews, notebooks, queries, and sources per notebook. Notebook. You can also customize the style and length of your notebook responses, create shared notebooks for your team and get usage analytics, and then whatever additional privacy and security means. Now for the average person or even just for solopreneurs or creators, I'm not sure Notebook LM Plus really makes that much sense. 
But when it comes to the question of access and how much is this going to cost, I actually found this on Google's main update page where they talk about Notebook LM Plus will be available to enterprise grade protection for businesses, schools, and universities. Enterprise customers via Google Workspace can be purchased separately via Google Cloud. It will also be included in the Google One Premium starting in early 2025. So it looks like you can't just purchase Notebook LM Plus as like a one-off subscription. You have to be involved in some of these other deals here. I actually am a member of Google One, uh, just this tier here for $20 a month. So I would imagine I, I get Notebook LM. It says in early 2025, I would qualify for Notebook LM Plus if that's the case. Now, I'm not sure what else they're going to come up with here. These are just, this is just what we know right now from what Google is telling us. But those are the three big Notebook LM updates that Google recently rolled out is the brand new interface, the interactive mode where you can talk with the audio overview and the AI host, and also Notebook LM Plus, which is a premium version. Now, the next big AI update coming out of Google was the announcement of Gemini 2.0. And this is an upgrade from Gemini 1.5. And to be honest, I didn't really use Gemini that much. I've always preferred Claude 3.5 Sonnet, GPT 4.0, sometimes 0.1 in certain use cases. But just looking at this and seeing what it can do, and I've tested around with it a little bit for recency prompts, for a little research here and there. Also in Notebook LM, that's something I forgot to mention, is that we can now access Gemini 2.0 inside Inside Notebook LM. So I probably have been using it more than I realize. And to access Gemini 2.0, all you need to do is go to gemini.google.com. It's completely free to use as far as I understand. If I click this, I get prompted with a message that says, try Gemini 2.0 Flash, our experimental model. And if I click try now, you'll see that we now have access to 2.0 Flash. It's in what's called Google refers to as the experimental model. So remember OpenAI had 01 in a preview mode. I'm assuming that's what this is and eventually you're going to come out with a 2.0 flash model that's not an experimental mode. But if I go back to this article and I'll leave a link to this in the description, I would highly recommend going through this. There's especially a video right here, three minutes long. I would suggest watching this just to get a high level overview of what Gemini 2.0 is all about. But what really caught my attention is their slogan up top our new AI model for the agentic era, agentic meaning agents. So it looks like Google is doubling down on AI agents as that is the big buzzword going into 2025. And if we look at some of these benchmarks here, uh, where they're comparing Gemini 2.0 to previous 1.5 models, you'll see it outperforms them literally on everything. Now, I always take benchmarks with a grain of salt here, um, but I would expect that, right? Gemini 2.0 should be previous 1.5 model in all the big benchmarks. And if we hop over to the chatbot arena leaderboard on Hugging Face, this is just a community of thousands of different people who test these AI models. And you'll see Gemini 2.0 Flash Experimental is currently ranking second. Now, what I don't understand are these new Gemini, are these Gemini models, Experimental 1206, 1121. I don't know if these are new models, if these are different iterations of 2.0 Flash. If you guys are more technical than I am, let me know in the comments really what this all means. But regardless, Gemini 2.0 Flash is towards the top of the leaderboards below GPT-40. It's even above 01 Preview, 01 Mini. Um, so that's really interesting to see. Now, I'm not going to test Gemini 2.0 in this video, but I am going to be comparing my outputs over time with GPT models, with uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet and other models from Anthropic. I'm sure I'll make a video comparing the models eventually, but if I were you guys, just go to gemini.google.com, sign in with a free Google account, and just start exploring, start testing this out and comparing it. I will say to cap off this uh, conversation about Gemini 2.0, the biggest thing I like is its integration, of course, with Notebook LM. I use Notebook Notebook LM. This is one of the, the AI tools that I use the most alongside with Chad GPT plus Claude perplexity pro. It's definitely in my top five. And so this really excites me now that I have a new model that I can use for free inside notebook LM to get better outputs. Now, the next big AI update coming out of Google is called VO2. Now, VO is nothing new. This is their state-of-the-art video generation model. It was just VO, but it got upgraded to VO2. I think it came out around the same time Sora did earlier this year. So what, 10 months ago at this point, but now they just got a huge upgrade. And as you'll see right here on their page, they have some examples. That looks realistic with the dog in the water. This person looking at the microscope looks extremely realistic. And if you scroll down, you can find other examples here 
here with props. So that's kind of cool. You can view it on YouTube if you want to do that. Um, but here are some of the benchmarks that Google VO, if I can scroll down, click benchmarks, where they compare it to other AI video models right now. So VO is in the green here. It's a little hard to read. And you'll see here we have Sora, Minimax. I don't know what Minimax is. Uh, Kling, that's a popular one. And also Meta Movie Gen. Meta Movie Gen recently came out as well. So according to prompt adherence and overall performance, uh, it looks like Google VO is beating Sora, Kling, Meta Movie Gen. It says there were ties in certain areas. But again, always take this with a grain of salt. But regardless, even just looking at this, it does look very similar and realistic to what we're seeing in the outputs from Sora. But the ultimate question I have with VO2, can we use it? We can use Sora now, right? OpenAI finally released that. So if I click sign up to try on Video FX, unfortunately, I get put to this page here where it says sign in to get a sneak peek. And if I click sign in with Google, click sign in again, I still do not have access to this. So I don't know if I need to be a member of the premium Gemini models or some premium Google plan, but it just kicks me back out. And if I click join waitlist, I already did join the waitlist and I haven't heard anything back from that either. So if you guys have access to VO2, let me know in the comments below, but I'm not really sure what their plan is to roll this out to the public. If it's going to be part of Google One or some other premium model, or if it's going to be by itself, I'm not sure how exactly they're going to price this out uh, and limit access with this. But I will be very curious to test out VO2 once I get access to this to what I can get access with with OpenAI's Sora right now. So like I mentioned earlier, you can find these examples here from VO2 with their prompts on Google DeepMind's YouTube channel. But the final note I want to make on VO2 is think about the amount of video content that Google owns, right? Obviously, Google owns YouTube. So in theory, what we're going to be able to do at some point is pull up VO2. Well, it'll, technically, it'll be Video FX powered by VO2 is we can go to Video FX and type in, I want a, a drone shot of New York City. I want uh, a video of the waves crash in Australia, right? And so think about all of the data that Google has or YouTube has at its disposal to repurpose that based on a text prompt. So whether it's a drone footage, uh, you know, a time-lapse footage, all the footage that we're finding on YouTube, VO2 will allow us to repurpose that with AI text prompts. A very powerful thing there that I think a lot of people don't realize when it comes to VO2. And another big AI update from Google was the announcement of Imogen 3. I think it's Imogen, Imagine. I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyways, it's the third iteration of their text-to-image model here. Google says our highest quality text-to-image model. You can actually start using this on Google Gemini. It's built in. And so I would recommend looking at this page and just start looking at some of these examples that Imogen 3 can produce. That's a cool image there. And of course, it includes prompts to all of these. But I learned you can't copy and paste it from this page, which is frustrating. Um, but so far, so good as I'm scrolling through here. And then of course the benchmark. So if these graphs are actually kind of hard to read, uh, human evaluation on gen AI win rate percentages for overall performance. But basically what they're trying to do here is tell you that Imogen 3 is better than the existing AI image models right now. So we have Ideogram 2, we have Flux 1, which We'll see here in a little bit. I don't know. I'm a big fan of Flux One. I think that's one of the best AI image models right now. We have Dolly 3, which I agree that's not a very high quality AI image model. But regardless, you guys can read all of this for yourselves. Look at some of these examples um, from doodles to masterpieces, right? You can do all sorts of images. Uh, that's a cool image there, et cetera, et cetera. So then what I did is I actually copy and pasted this exact prompt here of hot air balloons floating in the rock formations in Cappadocia, Turkey, wherever that's at. And so I threw it into Google Gemini using 2.0, and the image looks very similar as I expected. Well, then I took that same prompt and I compared it with Dolly 3. Not as realistic as I expected, right? I think this image in 3 is better than Dolly 3. But then I also plugged it into Flux 1. I actually like Flux 1. I think Flux 1 is more realistic than what we're seeing here out of Imogen 3. Now, it definitely has made some big improvements to where Google Gemini was creating images before. As you'll see here, they say it's our highest quality model capable of generating images with even better detail, richer lighting, and fewer distracting artifacts than our previous models. If you guys are curious and why I'm laughing about this, look up the controversy that Google had with AI image generation before this announcement of Imogen 3. But overall, so far, far so good, at least from the looks of things, I might have to start using this on Gemini for AI images if I continue to like the outputs. But regardless, a very big update from where they were from the previous AI image models.
Now, the final AI update I want to share recently coming out of Google is called Whisk. Now, according to Google, when they launched this, this comes out of Google Labs, they say Whisk is our new experiment that lets you use images as prompts to visualize your ideas and tell your story. Try it now. And so they have a quick little video demo. I'd recommend watching that. But if you go to Whisk, this is completely free to use with a Google account, just like everything else found in Google Labs. And you'll see here, this is what it looks like. So we have these different models. We can do a plushie, a sticker. Um, so we, I'll just do a sticker here. So it gives you a style subject equals. And so what I can do is you can actually upload your own images here as you'll see that's my headshot, but I just did this quick one here by default as an example. So it took this image of this dog in a suit, made it into a sticker. So kind of cool, I guess, obviously it's powered by image in three Google's latest AI image model. If I click start from scratch, this is what it looks like here. What I like right away is it has an inspire me. So you just kind of roll the dice and just generate something random. Random. I'm actually going to click that. And so here what it did is it came up with a random subject, a scene, and then a style. And if you click into this, you can actually delete, change, do whatever you want with it. But you'll notice on the bottom what this did is it created a prompt. And it looks like this is one sentence. Create a minimalist poster with the poster with a fun tagline using characters and an inspiring scene. Make sure the tagline is bold and easy to see. And if I click enter, now it's going to create a combination of these three images. So here's what it came up with in a matter of seconds. So if you're doing a, a poster that says find your voyage, you can use this right now. Again, that's just a very random example. I'm gonna have to spend more time diving into this. This is the very first time that I'm actually looking into Google Whisk right on the fly here with you guys. And so over time, if I do like this, you can set your presets here. You can set your aspect ratios. Of course, you can download the images. You can download this one. You can download this. You can refine it, right? So this is really cool. It's a cool concept. Now I actually found Whisk on what's called Google Labs. This is the home of AI experiments at Google. I'd recommend bookmarking this page at labs.google. And if you scroll down, this is where you can find all of the different AI experiments that Google is doing behind the scenes. So if I click view all, and I think there's another view all, so I'm gonna click see more. This is where you can find everything AI related that Google is working on. Obviously Notebook LM, right? Whisk, like I just talked about. There's some AI agent stuff going on here. Video FX, like I covered. Uh, let's see here, Image FX, Learn About. I covered that in a previous video. Uh, Magic Editor, uh, Code, Illuminate, I covered that. Music FX. Uh, Google Vids, that's a recent update where you can create Google videos, I believe, inside Google Slides and whatnot. I've actually seen some bad reviews on that so far. Um, but anyways, these are all the different AI experiments that Google is working on, and you can learn more about all of this, again, at Google Labs. Now, I know I just covered a lot of Google AI updates, but if you still made it this far to the video, I appreciate you. If you found value, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If there are any other AI updates that I miss coming out of Google, let me know in the comment section below. And especially as OpenAI has their 12 days of OpenAI where they've been releasing all these huge features, right? We've seen Sora, we've seen ChatGPT projects, we saw ChatGPT Pro, O1 came out of preview mode, and there's all these big updates, ChatGPT search is rolling out to free users. So when it comes to the AI race, in my opinion, just within the last week, it's down to OpenAI and Google. We've heard crickets from uh, Microsoft lately. We've heard crickets from Meta. Movie Gen was their last big update. And now it's really come down to OpenAI and Google as we close out 2024. And it'll be really interesting where this is going to go as we head into 2025. But again, if you have any thoughts about that, let me know in the comments. But most importantly, I hope you all have a great day.